Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Late last night, it was revealed that Saul Alvarez's next opponent is going to be future Boxing Hall of Famer Sugar Shane Mosley. Now, um, this fight's intriguing. And uh, let me just say, one of the problems with old age, and Shane Mosley is much older than Saul Alvarez, is that while you might look in shape, and while you might still have hand speed and punching power, and remember, as they say in boxing, power is the last thing to go. The things that deteriorate might not be readily apparent, and they are the reflexes, something you really do need in boxing. So you'll see these older fighters, and they'll look lethargic, and sometimes they're seeing holes, and they just can't react to them. If you look at interviews of many of the best fighters in history, Ray Leonard, uh, Muhammad Ali, when they reflect on the last few fights of their careers, they always lament the fact that they saw what to do, but they couldn't do it, right? And these are guys who may still have had, you know, hand speed, they may still have had power, but what they didn't have were the reflexes of somebody in their 20s. I believe that that's the situation right now with Shane Mosley. In fact, let me just say, I believe that Shane Mosley only has the reflexes early in fights. I believe after a few rounds, Shane Mosley's reflexes are gone. And the problem is, you know, he's still doing things that he did when he was a younger man when he had the reflexes. In other words, sometimes the person who's the last to know about their diminished reflexes is the fighter, right? He might think he's having a bad day but he's been having a lot of bad days strung together recently. Let's talk about it. He's fighting Floyd Mayweather. He comes within an eyelash of dropping Mayweather, right? Of all the fights Mayweather has had, I would say he never got hit as hard as he did by Shane Mosley. But then curiously, it looked like Mosley let Mayweather off the hook, right? And then something incredible happened. Old Chain Mosley was a finisher. He would have jumped on a hurt opponent who barely survived the round. But this older Shane Mosley couldn't finish. In other words, for some odd reason, for the remaining rounds of that Floyd Mayweather fight, and he hurt Mayweather early in that fight, Floyd Mayweather was able to literally dominate those rounds. It was as if Shane Mosley just wasn't energetic enough. And I thought that it was significant because after the fight, Mosley believed that Floyd had leaned on the back of his neck and that he was just simply too tight, right? Well, then what explains what happened in the Manny Pacquiao fight, where Shane Mosley comes out, the fight actually looks intriguing. I thought Shane Mosley had a real chance in that fight, right? Uh, my straddle held in that fight, by the way. I had Manny Pacquiao by decision, uh, straddle against Shane Mosley by knockout. But I thought Shane Mosley had a real chance in that fight. Style-wise, Mosley lined up well with Manny Pacquiao. There's no reason why Mosley couldn't have looked 
at least as good as Juan Manuel Marquez did in his recent fight against Manny Pacquiao, right? But that was old Shane Mosley. Current Shane Mosley looked lethargic, right? Got hit, got dropped. Now old Shane would have gotten off the canvas with a chip on his shoulder and would have tried to punish the guy who punished him. But this Shane, older Shane, looked like he was just trying to survive the entire second half of his fight against Manny Pacquiao. So let me say this. Mosley today has faster hands, in my opinion, than Saul Alvarez. Saul Alvarez today is not a great defensive fighter. Right, Saul Alvarez reminds me, quite frankly, of Vladimir Klitschko. In other words, the guy looks great. He looks tough. If he gets you at the end of a jab and is able to hit you with a lethal left hook, right, hook off the jab, or if he comes with a straight right hand, he's one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport. He can take you out and he can look great doing so. But, as with Vladimir Klitschko, if you can get inside of his jab and his power, then what you might find is what Corey Sanders found against Vladimir Klitschko. In other words, the eggshell is hard. Inside, it's a yoke, right? Shane Mosley was able to get inside on Antonio Margarito. When he gets inside, Shane Mosley can throw very hard punches. Mosley today, like Canelo, is one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport. Mosley can throw very hard hooks up close, and he can dent even excellent chins like Antonio Margarito's chin. Right, And let's remember, Margarito... Never hit the canvas against even a hard hitter like Miguel Cotto, right? Margarito never hit the canvas against Manny Pacquiao, right? Margarito never hit the canvas against Kermit Cintron, two fights. But yet Margarito was bouncing off the canvas against Shane Mosley. My recommended play on this fight is that you take Shane Mosley by KO, straddled against Canelo to win the fight. I believe at this stage, Canelo is the better boxer. In fact, I think Canelo, unless he gets knocked out, wins this fight. I believe he outboxes Shane Mosley, who I consider to be a slugger masquerading as a boxer, right? But especially early in the fight, before old age catches up with Shane, older guys don't have the stamina of younger guys, and Shane fades like he has in multiple recent fights, right? I haven't even talked about the Sergio Mora fight, right? I think early in this fight, Shane Mosley has a real chance. And let me go one step further. You know, it's possible, we've seen this in boxing, that Shane Mosley has drained himself and is dead at the weight at 147 pounds. That's where he fought Floyd Mayweather. That's where he fought Manny Pacquiao, right? If you drain yourself to fight at an artificially low weight, your body might just be dead at the weight. You might not be able to do a thing. Well, this fight's at 154, right? Canelo is the champ at 154. If the fight takes place at 154, it's possible that Mosley might physically be in much better shape than he was against either Mayweather or Pacquiao, right? Because understand, Mosley spent 
a huge portion of his career at 154. He fought Fernando Vargas at 154, had his power, had everything going for him. So when this fight is announced, pay attention to the weight, right? If it's at 154 and not some joke catch weight, 150 or whatever, then I actually believe that might help Shane Mosley, especially his punch resistance. Because Mosley has been known to have a great chin. I believe he's only been down twice. Vernon Forrest, that first fight, and Manny Pacquiao, right? He was dropped by two great fighters. The Pacquiao drop was disturbing because after the fight, Shane Mosley talked about Manny Pacquiao's power. If you recall, there was some controversy there. Mosley seemed to be really surprised by Pacquiao's power. It could be that Mosley was so weight drained that his punch resistance was gone, right? If that's the case, if it's too low a weight and not old age, then it's possible that Mosley has an, either, an even better chance than I think he does in getting the KO at 154. To sum up, I believe what Mosley has is a puncher's chance. The way I'm going to play this is to take Canelo to win the fight, straddle against Shane Mosley by KO. And don't kid yourself, this is a real fight because Miguel Cotto's brother had Canelo in trouble. There's an open question about Canelo's chin, just like there is every young fighter until they get hit, right? And Canelo, really, in my opinion, has only faced one big puncher in his career. That was Kermit Cintron. And in that fight, which was closer than people realize, Kermit Cintron actually did hit Canelo with some hard shots. In other words, Canelo's defense isn't impenetrable. And Canelo is not that fast-handed a guy. So if Shane Mosley was able to land on Antonio Margarito, and I understand Margarito's not a great defensive fighter or even a good defensive fighter, but if he was able to land on Margarito and hurt him badly, what happens if he lands on Saul Alvarez and hurts him badly? Does Alvarez have the survival skills to actually stay upright? That's the big question. Let me also say, too, that the reason my straddle is Canelo to win, straddled against Shane Mosley by KO, is even though Mosley has not been knocked out out in his career. Be careful. Don't take Canelo by decision. Mosley was down against Manny Pacquiao and Saul Alvarez hits much harder than Manny Pacquiao, right? If Shane Mosley is at the tail end of his career, and let's remember, he had a draw with Sergio Mora, he lost to Floyd Mayweather, he lost to Manny Pacquiao. Right? If Shane Mosley's at the tail end of his career, and if that knockdown by Manny Pacquiao shows where Mosley's chin is right now, then certainly Saul Alvarez has a shot at a knockout in this fight himself. So the play I'm recommending is Saul Alvarez, if I haven't said it enough, Saul Alvarez to win the fight, straddle against Shane Mosley by KO, if you are doing live betting in a country that permits live betting, of course, online, if Shane Mosley doesn't land something dramatic in the first six rounds of this fight, then I think he's really in severe trouble the second half of the fight. Mosley shouldn't try to pace himself, right? Because unfortunately, when you're older, right, unless you're a serious technician, which I don't believe Mosley is, like a Bernard Hopkins, right? Unless you're, you know, an Eric Morales type fighter, right? If you're a Shane Mosley type fighter, really a puncher, 
your power will dissipate as the fight goes on. So Mosley's best chance to shock all of us and to get the knockout will take place, in my opinion, in the first six rounds of this matchup. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Canelo to win, straddle against Mosley by KO. That's how I see it. Let me know how you see it. Leave your comments here online and let's talk about it and visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.